The Gracie family is the most important family in the history of martial arts. Here's the fascinating story of UFC first champion, Hoyce Gracie, and how he won the belt in just one day. Hoyce faced three opponents in a single night. He didn't know their height, weight, nor fighting style. All he knew was there were no rounds and no judges. And when David Goggins says we are badass, we are Badass. That Gracie shit's no joke though. Mm, Them motherfucker, that family. They changed the world. The world. It wasn't so easy to win the UFC title back in those times. Now, fighters can dodge fights as they want, waiting until the right opponent and conditions present themselves. In 1993, Hoist Gracie, who's from that Gracie family, had no luxury like that. At UFC 1, there were three rules in total. No biting, no eye gouging, and no groin shots. If you broke them, there was a pretty decent fine. In the comments, you may guess the amount. The match only ended by submission, knockout, or surrender. That's it. No time limit and no scoring system. It didn't work here. Fun fact, gloves were allowed, as Hoist's first opponent showed in their bout, where he fought with one boxing glove. And by the way, Hoist Grassi needed only 44 minutes to beat three guys and win the belt. Here's the question. How did he make it? UFC 1 was a no holds bear tournament, which was entered by the toughest 8 guys from all around the world. And when I say tough, I mean real bad motherfuckers. No hype trains. The first one was Zan Frazier, the tallest guy in the tournament at an incredible 6 foot 6. Taylor Willie, the heaviest guy out there at 450 pounds. Yeah, he fought sumo. Kevin Rossier, Rest in peace champion, he never backed down and fought in boxing, kickboxing and MMA. Arguably one of the most experienced fighters of the evening. Art Jimerson, aka One Glove because for some reason he fought with One Glove. Ken Shamrock who didn't last more than one minute against Hoyce but still made a huge MMA career afterwards. Patrick Smith, unluckily again. Rest in peace champion, a huge giant with a beautiful heart with an incredible kickboxing career. And lastly, Gerard Giordo, a 6 foot 5 giant weighing 220 pounds, who was the final opponent for Hoyce. Hoyce first faced R. Jimerson, who confirmed his nickname and entered with one glove only. The whole fight ended after an inside 2 minutes and 18 seconds, when Hoyce submitted Art by a smother choke. Art barely touched Hoist and he was ready for the next bout against Shamrock. The semi-final bout lasted just 57 seconds, when Gracie used a rear naked choke. He was ready for the final where he faced a giant from the Netherlands, Gerard Gerdeu. Gerard had won all fights by TKO, the first one in 26 seconds and the second one in 59 seconds, so he was fresh for the third finish. Hoist went for the takedown right from the start. Fighters compared their strength and here we must mention that Hoist was lighter by 30 pounds. You can see Gerard was a head taller than the cage. Hoist easily took Gerard down. The facial expression of Gerard looked like he witnessed a takedown for the very first time. Hoist used all techniques, even a head button. He easily got Gerard's back and delivered a rear naked choke without getting a hit. So before any Chuck Little, Conor McGregor or Khabib, the very first champion was Hoist Dressy. And if you think the story of the first UFC champ ends here, you can't be more wrong. He even won UFC 2. And the tournament was twice as big. 16 bad motherfuckers from every martial art. Taekwondo, Muay Thai, Karate, Wing Chun, Sensu, Kenpo, Sawai and of course Jiu Jitsu from Brazil. His first opponent was the dangerous Minoki Ichira, who stood at 5 foot 7 and weighted around 180 pounds, but paradoxically was the toughest fight for Hoist. The fight lasted 5 minutes, which was a record for the time, and nowadays it's only one round. After this unimaginable time when Hoist tested his limits, he submitted Minoki by a lapel choke. The quarterfinal bout was against Jason De Lucia, who represented Kung Fu. As expected, the fight lasted one minute when Hoy submitted Jason with a beautiful armbar. In the semi-final, Remco Perdel awaited Hoysi. He won the last match by a nasty KO. 
Il est KO. Ah, il est KO. C'est fini. Fini. Hoist was on cuffed off guard and submitted Hiramko in 90 seconds by a leopard choke for the second time in the night. The final match was against Patrick Smith, who had, let's say, a pretty decent night. He finished Scott Morris in 30 seconds by a brutal KO. Both fighters were visibly exhausted, but Hoist showed a bigger heart. He probably had lower stamina, but his BJJ technique saved him, securing a takedown and paving the road for the second title was more than obvious to everyone. He got on top and for the very first time in his career finished the fight by TKO. Well, you may guess, it doesn't end here, nor do we do. Everything was fine, Hoyt was popular, two times UFC champion and was getting ready for the UFC 3. But the storyline for this event was completely different. Hoist entered the tournament as a superstar and clear favorite with an impressive 7 to nil record. First opponent was American Kimo Leopoldo with a background from Germany. We can say it was a usual start for Hoist. The first match was long, not really exciting, like Hoist was just warming up. But at UFC 3 many things have changed. Even though Hoist earned a submission, Kimo exhausted him so much that Hoist wasn't able to continue anymore and didn't win the UFC title for the very first time. We can say, right here, ended the hype of Hoist. Hoist showed for the first time his weaknesses. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't the end of his career. It was just the end of a beautiful story of the first UFC's champion. I really want to talk about his career after UFC because many fighters struggle to find new purpose for their lives. Okay, uh, the movie 300, you've seen it, and you're out to promote the film right now, right? You okay, Chuck? Yeah, I'm okay. All right, you all right? All right, doing all right. This wasn't the case for Hoist. Throughout his post-UFC career, Hoist Dressy remained an iconic figure in the world of martial arts. His contributions to the popularization of BJJ and MMA have had a lasting impact, inspired generation of athletes and practitioners such as Joe Rogan and myself. What's the practical use of jiu-jitsu? Well, if you and I were in a fight, that, that would kill you. That <laughs> Gracie continued to compete in MMA events following his time in the UFC. He fought in various organizations including Pride and K1. Although he didn't achieve the same level of dominance as he did in the early UFC tournaments, he remained influential. Gracie focused on teaching BJJ and promoting the art worldwide. He played a significant role in popularizing BJJ, spreading its techniques and mostly philosophy globally. He's the reason why everyone knows about BJJ. Gracie became known as one of the foremost ambassadors of BJJ and played a vital role in its growth. Hoist Gracie, along with his family members, established the Gracie Academy in California. The Academy offers classes, seminars and instructional materials to students of all levels, continuing the legacy of the Gracie family. Hoist participated in exhibition matches and seminars worldwide demonstrating BJJ techniques and sharing his insight with practitioners. Those events allow him to interact with fans and students. Overall, Hoist Gracie's post-UFC career has been characterized by his dedication to teaching and promoting BJJ.